Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is you guys are watching this video. Uh, before I even get started, I want you guys just to drop a big like on this video and comment how you guys have been doing during this whole quarantine. Uh, let me know how you guys are doing, what you've been doing, what's going on with you. You guys obviously know what's going on with me. I'm here with Carter again and Carter's... We figured out the system. All Carter has to do is lay out boxes and we can knock everything out. So I'm going to show you in today's video the suspension Carter's got. Because the suspension he's got is, yo, know, it's primo. And uh, we're just going to start knocking boxes out one after another. So now we're just going to go into what suspension Carter's got. Again, big shout outs to my guys over at K-Tune, my sponsors. They blessed Carter with a K-1 coilover setup and a traction bar setup. So Carter's going to be running brand new K-Tuned K-1 coils, fresh out the box. I was just taking a look at them. And uh, I mean, this is like the best on the market right now with the amount of adjustability you get. I think these are 32 way adjustability and uh, these, these are going to be real nice. And then we're going to pair the suspension with some fresh powder coated forks he's got. He's got some new suspension bolts. He's got his K-Tune traction bar. It's gonna be running a Skunk 2 upper strut bar, and then we're gonna see if we can get this whole radiator set up. Radiator, ra I, <laughs> I know they're gonna start again. The radiator set up going, but uh, this is our this is our agenda for today. Suspension and uh, radiator, radiator set up and some little odds and ends that we can figure out. All right, so we're gonna give you guys a quick walkthrough on how to install your K1 suspension on your EK because this is super easy to do. And it's, it's actually gonna go by real quick. So first thing you're gonna do is uh, grab your fork. So Carter has his fork right now, freshly powder coated. And uh, you slide your fork on first over your axle and then you just kind of let it sit there. So we're gonna let that sit there. Then you grab your coil, take your nuts off off the top. All right, so once you got that ready, now you're gonna just fit it in loosely on the top. So Matt's gonna pass it up to the top. I'm gonna start these guys for him. Should be okay. All right, so now we got the coil held up the top by the two nuts. So now is when you just slide over your fork. And uh, we got all new OEM hardware. I'll see if I can find the bags with the part numbers. But first we're gonna get this guy here, which is gonna go on the top of the pole for the fork. So wait, we gotta put anti-seize on that. So we're putting anti-seize on all of our bolts. So Carter's gonna put some anti-seize on the threads. Just a little bit, you don't need much. the other side That's so now all we do with that we just kind of run it in hand tight for now because now the next thing we're gonna do we're actually gonna run the second one through so I'm gonna lift the uh, whole bottom coil, uh, control arm section for him so Carter can get that started and then we'll tighten the bottom bottom bolt started well actually not start all the way through now this is where we're gonna tighten the bottom section so we're gonna tighten this nut and bolt completely and then once we tighten this then I'll grab the hub again because you see you got a little gap right in here so then I'll lift it up again to get rid of that gap and then we'll tighten the back bolts on the fork that's pretty much it our coilovers and the front are installed it's super super simple on this, I mean, especially since we have the whole front end taken apart, but I wanna talk about adjustability or uh, height adjustment right now, real quick, because we're not adjusting the height. At this moment, we don't have the OEM struts anymore, so we kind of uh, leveled these out evenly, so we just put a straight edge on the bottom of them and spun the bodies until they were even, so at least the front is gonna be even. Now, when you go to adjust this, usually what everybody does, they'll take the back nut off, they'll, they'll drop the fork so they can spin the body but I mean, really, a quicker way that you could do it without having to take your whole suspension apart is you lower your, your, your not you lower, you loosen up your lower lock collar, right? So that way the body is free. And then you put your wrench on the top one and you spin the top either way. So what this does, because these two lock nuts, they're locked together. So you're not actually going to mess anything up with your preload. But since they're locked together, they're actually locked on the whole uh, sleeve on the back. So if you spin this, you're spinning the whole coil over up and down in the lower body portion, which will essentially raise or lower the coil over rather than just taking this whole section apart and then you just spin the bottom. So it's, it's literally doing the opposite if you guys can understand this concept. What you do originally, you would loosen this, 
spin the body. So you're spinning the body to adjust your height because this whole section right here is not moving. But in essence, now what we're doing, we're loosening this, spinning this whole section, which all these threads will spin on the body. So it's the same thing, just doing it the opposite way. So that's the way we're gonna adjust it. When he gets his wheels and the car's back on the ground, we find our adjustments. Rather than taking all this apart, we loosen this guy down here, we put our wrench up here, we spin this, we get our height, lock it down, and that's the quick way to do it. All right, so now installing the back, it's, uh, it's pretty much just as simple. Uh, the way we did it, we actually didn't drop the uh, lower control arm. We just put a pry bar on the trailing arm, pried the suspend or the whole uh, rear trailing arm down to pull the old shock out or the old strut out. So the new one, because they're coilovers, they're already shorter to begin with. So we don't even need to pry anything. So Carter's just gonna go fit this guy up there and then I'll come around and attack the nuts. So that's all. You can see you don't have to pry on anything. It goes right in. Let me grab the nuts right here. We'll get it started right here. All right, so now we got the upper nuts started. So what we're doing right now is we're actually putting a jack under the lower control arm. So what we're doing right here, we're kind of trying to like make ride height right now. So when you make it ride height, you're, you tighten everything down at ride height so you don't put any stress on the bushings. And now, in order to put this lower bolt in, the k actually come with two washers. So they're, uh, where are they? They're right here. I got one right here, Carter's got one. So these washers actually go in between the bushing. So don't put them on the outside. So what you would do, you would just kind of like grab the coil, move it over, put it in between the gap right here, and then run the bolt through. So you're gonna put any seize on, on this one first, just wear any seizing everything right now, just to be safe. Is it on the other side? I lost just push the coil over over it's real easy yeah there you go so you just push that over you get your washer started there you go. push that bolt through now don't push it all the way you got to get the other washer which I don't think I'm gonna be able to get but you guys will have to uh, believe me it's the same process it's probably a little tighter Yeah, just a smidge. Good. Perfect. Now we just put our nut on. It's right under the jack right here, right by the wheel. Yep. And uh, that's it. So now we're gonna tighten this still with the jack under the control arm. That way we try to take as much stress off the bushing. So that way this, that's how they're gonna sit at ride height. And uh, all the coilovers are installed, and we're just going to tighten the uh, the lock nuts on all of them, just to be, for now, until the car, again, the car is back on the ground, then we'll make our adjustments. Once you got your suspension all bolted up, I don't want to say dialed in yet, because dialing in comes after you drive it. But once you got it all bolted up, you're going to want to set your uh, your preload and every, not your preload, your dampening on all the coilovers. So k gives you this little key right here. So this key goes on the top of the coilovers and you can actually adjust. There's 30, 32 adjustabilities of dampening of soft, of, you want it soft over bumps or you want it like stiff, like riding on rails. You feel every bump, that's that's your preference, but I would recommend starting it off in the middle, kind of like what Carter did. So we put this at 15 clicks. What you would do, you would just put your key in here and then you would just turn this. So I'm gonna go, I'll start from zero again. So you can see I get all these clicks and then it stops. So now we're gonna count one, two, three, four, like you get the idea. So we would go from zero or from one all the way to 32, whatever, whatever you, what you feel is necessary. But I would suggest driving it first, make an adjustment, drive it again. That's how you're gonna feel. You're really gonna feel it is what I'm trying to say. With these, you, it's like you, every little click you make, you feel it. So whatever you decide to do, just set this up. Same thing on the back. If you want the back stiffer, you can do the back stiffer than the front. Like there's so much adjustability with this coilover. So. We're gonna set this up, and next thing we're gonna put on is uh, his uh, Skunk 2 strut bar. Unfortunately, the strut bars are not gonna fit. It seems like the strut bar is just for like a EK with a single cam in it. Uh, it doesn't work with a case swap, I'll show you why. So naturally, naturally you would put these brackets right here with the, you know, take the nuts off, put them down. We just laid this down to get the idea how it's gonna work. 
and then you go to put it on this side and uh, you know, just go ahead and lay it down softly Carter you can obviously see we're making contact with the valve cover right there and there's no no grinding is gonna fix that it's, the more you grind you're gonna just cut the whole hole out so this is not gonna work with our case swap unfortunately this is actually really nice nice strut bar I didn't even know skunks who had something like this it's all aluminum super lightweight black you put a nice black uh, emblem on it it's in their box somewhere yeah this is not gonna work with a case swap let me give you guys a one not to get. Uh, where is it? I don't gotta. Oh, here it is. All right. So here, upper front strut tower bar black. Yeah, yeah. It says it, dude. It's just just for Civic those Souls Integros. It's not like it, it would probably say case swap on it, but this won't work with a case swap, unfortunately. So if you guys are interested in some of this, something like this, you have a B series or a single cam. Leave it in the comments. Send me a DM on Instagram. Or actually, don't send me a DM. I hate when people do that. And I'm not selling. It's not mine. I'm going to put Carter's Instagram down right now. Send him a DM. He'll give you a good deal. He'll send it to you. He'll ship it to you. Whatever. Because, uh, well, we, we can't use it. So, it's not going to work. I'm sorry, Carter. It's not, it's not going to work, man. Don't worry about what I'm doing over here. It's not going to work. Next thing, we're going to put the, uh, the traction bar on. We know that's going to go on. Okay, so here's everything you get in the k Tune traction bars. This is everything you need. So the traction bar, obviously, is going to go right uh, over here. It's going to lock into these bolts right here. So on both sides, right over here. It's kind of dark, but that's where the actual bar goes. That's where you get all these different adjustments. Here's your uh, your sleeves. And now what Carter was explaining to me, which I didn't know, these, uh, damn, what are these called? I can't even think of what they're called right now. Spherical. Spherical bushings or bearings. No, they're bushings. Spherical bushings. They're in two different colored bags. The blue, don't open them up and mix them up. The blue bag needs to go on the end where it has two lines right here on your uh, on your rods for the traction bar. Now, explain to me why why do they go on that? What? To be honest, I've seen people do it either way, but I just went that way. Oh, you're just picking. Yeah. <laughs> but they need to be on the same end of both rods. Well, like, yeah, it's left hand threads on one side because when you rotate it, it's moving opposite okay. directions. Okay. All it's right. Connected to two different points. All right. So we're gonna put the ones in the blue bag on this end right here. Here's your brackets that go on the actual lower arm. So you would face it like this. There's your two bolts right there. You take those bolts out. Get this in right here. That's how that's gonna fit. Your other spherical bushing would go right in here and then connect to the whole arm to the front of the traction bar. It's a pretty simple setup, but it's very effective. And uh, when I placed this bar in the front of his, uh, his chassis right now, there was like movement side to side of the bar. I don't know if this car was like, it doesn't look like it was ever hit, but the frame might be like tweaked a little bit outward. Okay, yeah, six G's on a stock frame. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna throw some washers on each end of the traction bar just to try to take that gap up so we're not using the bolts to try to pull it back tight. But, so we're gonna start by putting the bar on first, really. That's the easiest thing. You put the bar on and then we'll work our way back to the arms. All right, there we go. We got the K2 traction bar on. It was a very simple install. It's very straightforward. So you can see everything is tight over here. Everything's on our brackets over there. Everything's tight on the lower control arm. And uh, we got kind of an adjustment. You know, the only adjustment is to uh, get everything lined up. You won't really know what adjustments you need until you get this on the rack. But uh, here you can see we have our bolts on that end. We have our bolts on this end holding it in. Like I said, we used one washer on each bolt just to take this little gap up because there was a gap. That was more than enough. That's perfect. So Carter's tightening up his end right now. Well, actually, he's working on some other stuff right now. His end is all good. And, uh, yeah, I really like this bar. So now I think we're going to see if we can get this uh, radiator in. Radiator. Oh, whatever. <laughs> so we're deciding to hold off on putting the radiator on. We uh, actually have to do a couple other little things before we can put the radiator on and final, like, bolt it down completely. So we didn't do the radiator. We ended up putting his hybrid racing ground kit. So I'll show you where we put his grounds. And uh, that's the that's it for today. Carter's gonna grab another pile of boxes. Well, actually, next time I think we're gonna do a lot of wiring. Uh, we're gonna start getting all the like headlight harness and stuff, all the wiring done in the engine bay. That way we can start like possibly putting headlights on and uh, and just connecting everything. You ordered them? 
Oh, yes. Oh, I mean, you got time then. So he's going to order some new headlights, but we're going to do some wiring. Let's show you where the grounding is. So for his trans ground, we just took a 110 off of the shift selector right here, grounded it right here onto his frame. The engine ground, we went off of the post mount right back here. So we just put another bolt because the post mount always has one empty bolt, uh, one empty uh, hole with threads. We put a bolt in there and then we just went right here to the frame. So that's our engine to frame. That's our trans to frame. And then our battery to frame would be right here whenever he puts his battery. So this is the hybrid racing ground kit. That's all good to go. And uh, that's pretty much it. Yeah, I think that's, that's everything else we did off camera. Uh, coilovers, they're uh, semi-adjusted until we bring the car on the ground. Don't don't get too upset where the car's not ready to come on the ground yet. You still need to put brakes on it and, and all that. So that's why we're not dropping it. Traction bar is on. That was good. So big shout out to K2. K2 really hooked us up. Hooked Carter up with the uh, coilovers, the traction bar. That's really going to make the car just feel totally different. Just just those two pieces alone. It's going to make the car feel different. Just like any project, it's all the little odds and ends. That's really uh, like the fine details now is what we're waiting on. Carter needs to get like a hose for the, the reservoir, for the clutch slave, um, wiring. We still have to do the exhaust. Carter's got to put a fuel pump in it. What else do you have to do, Carter? Or what else do you have? The fuel pump, the brakes. Oh, brake. Yeah, brakes. The whole cooling system. I mean, you still got to get radiator hoses for that. I think that's... Put the conversion harness. The oh, okay. Well, that yeah, that, that's more wiring. Like, he's got the conversion harness. We have to go inside and do that. And I'm not sure if we mentioned it, but Carter's running a stock... ECU, it's O2 to O4 Type S ECU. It's not K Pro, so once once you put it in, it's literally turnkey. There's no adjusting that we're gonna do. Oh, we have to adjust the TPS though. We have to get the voltage and uh, calibrate or set that, not calibrate, just set it to where it needs to be. That's pretty much it, guys. If you haven't liked this video, make sure you like it already. Again, big shout out to KTune. Uh, leave comments how you guys been doing through the quarantine. If you have any questions on the build, I just found out Honda Day may be happening in Cecil County. And that's, of course, if everything passes and, and we're allowed to go back to racing again. So if we do, that's in September. I think this car could get there. I think we could debut this car at H Day this year. Fingers crossed. Um, it's May. It's the middle of May. So we have, what, three months, June, July, August. We got four months. This car is going to make it to Honda Day. Leave a comment. Give car motivation. Like this video. You guys are going to see this car at H-Day, hopefully this year, if they have H-Day. So I'll catch you guys in the next video. Stay motivated and keep making the streets louder.